So oh, hi. Uh, in this video, we will solve a, a past year's uh, exam uh, question about control of induction motors. So in this question, we have a tower crane. You know, as you can see here, so tower cranes are quite commonly used in industry and construction area. So they are usually driven by AC motors with variable voltage and frequency drive. So you have a drum like that and then drum uh, pulls the uh, steel cable which carries the load. So in this problem uh, we will ignore the parallel branch of the induction motor in the column circuit and there are no friction and windage losses. So in the first part, so assume that the crane is operator is moving up you know, MS a constant at constant speed. So it is a constant torque load for from the point of induction motor. It's a constant torque load operating at constant speed. So in the first part, was easy. So please sketch the torque car speed characteristics of a typical induction machine between slip is equal one and slip is equal minus one. Label the critical points and clearly show the operating uh, mode regions. And in the same graph, draw a load torque line and label the operating point. In what mode does the machine is operating in this case? So we are going up. So let's I'll try to draw it. So typical curve will be like that. And we want slip is one. So slip one means, uh, so let me call NR rotor speed. So it is zero at zero, slip is one. So it will start something like, start something like that, right? So this will be the synchronous speed. So at that point, slip will be zero. And if we go further, it will have you know, that kind of characteristics. So that part is, remember, this is motoring region. And that part is generating region. So here, slip is less than zero. So in this range, slip is between one and zero. So here, if we have of let's use one. So let's say if this is my low torque line, okay, that intersection point that will be the operating point. We don't know any numbers yet, but I know if it is going up the crane will be motoring. So we are converting electrical energy to mechanical energy, and it will be uh, slightly less than the synchronous speed. Okay, so the machine, machine is operating as a motor and power flows from from electrical system to mechanical system so in the next part it was given uh, the top characteristics of an induction motor can be approximated using a linear equation in the form as torque is equal to some constant time slip. Remember, if the slip doubles, so does the torque, and that approximation is valid uh, for a small area. And where k is a factor that depends on the machine. Starting from the electromechanical torque expression given below, so that one is given, derive the value of k. Please state any assumptions you made for full credit. So actually in the last video I already you know uploaded that derivation but uh, let me write here as well uh, for the sake of completeness. So for you know I want to go from that equation to that form okay so that thing is only valid is as if if s is small okay so s like 
small, so around 0, maybe 0 0.01, 0 0.05, whatever. So if S is 0, so as you can see from uh, that equation, so R2 prime over S, if it is divided by 0 0.01, for example, that means it's like multiplied by 100. And you can say that part will be bigger than R1 and also that will be bigger than x1 and x2 prime. So I can say uh, all that one, okay, r1 plus r2 prime over s square plus x1 plus x2 prime square can be approximated as r2 prime over s square. Okay, if that one is much larger than that one, you are taking the square so this is you know again this is not 100 percent accurate but it is uh, feasible so if i make that change i can write the torque as 3 v1 square divided by omega s r2 prime over s square times r2 prime over s and actually that one and that one cancels so you can write as 3 v1 square times s divided by omega s r2 prime and actually uh, that value here is equal to k in that equation okay so torque can be represented with some constant value if the speed is not changing if the r2 prime and the voltage is not changing then i can represent the torque and i can show like torque doubles if the slip has doubled. Okay. So now that's the first part. Uh, we see actual uh, numbers. So we have a 400 volts uh, line to line, which is the standard in three phase systems. Now, Y connected 16 kilowatts, uh, six pole secure cage induction machine, and the referred rotor resistance is 0 0.5 ohms. And the crane operator lifts a mass, you know, which exerts uh, 91 Newton meters. So actually, you know, we can know the mass, but there are drums, maybe gearboxes. Anyway, at the end of the day, uh, that mass applies a torque equivalent to 91 Newton meters of the torque. Calculate the rotor speed in RPM. Okay. And the induction machine is supplied by 50 Hertz, whatever, 400 volts. So let's uh, start with calculations. What I know is line to line voltage is 400 volts. So it is Y connected. Don't forget to convert everything to per phase equivalents. So it is 400 volts divided by square root 3. If it were a delta connected machine, then that is equal to a phase voltage. So that is 230 volts. So it is a six pole machine. Okay, if it is a six pole machine, uh, NS synchronous speed will be around 1000 RPM. At fifth, uh, normally in a two pole machine, the synchronous speed is 300 RPM. Again, you, you can use the 120 F divided by poles. And synchronous, and this is synchronous, mechanical speed okay don't use omega ss like 50 hertz in torque calculations 50 hertz in the electrical side whenever you are dealing with torque you are on the mechanical system right so either you can write if you want 2 pi f divided by 6 poles divided by 2 is the pole pairs so this is 100 e divided by 3 or you can actually convert that to that one so this is radian per second so i will use the uh, simplified torque value here because it is given already and i don't know the x1 and x2 values so if uh, if it is using 91 newton meters so i can uh, calculate the slip and other things so torque is equal 3 v1 square divided by omega s times r2 prime 
times s. So 91 is equal to uh, 3 times 230 squared. Or you can write here 400 uh, divided by square root 3. They will cancel each other anyways. So 100 e divided by 3 times r2 prime is given as like 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times s so the only, the only unknown here is the slip and if you calculate the slip you can find it like 0.033 percent and from there if the synchronous speed is uh, 1000 rpm if the slip is 0, 0.0 so that means there's a 30 rpm slip or you can write r is equal 1 minus s times ns so it is 0 0.97 times 1000 rpm okay so this is 970 rpm so this is the actual rotation speed okay and the question asks the rotor speed in rpm so that's the answer so in the next part uh, the operator would like to increase the speed of the load so it was going up already but I want to increase its speed and you know the motor controller responds it's by suddenly changing the applied frequency to 60 hertz at first we were applying 50 hertz but now it became uh, 60 hertz under constant V by F mode of operation calculate the speed of the rotor once the system reaches the steady state under 60 hertz excitation so we, we are working at uh, constant flux or constant V by F operation so that means if frequency is increased voltage should be increased so at first I was operating like 50 Hertz with 230 volts okay now I'm coming to 60 Hertz if I just keep the voltage constant then the remember the field gets weakening if we get into the fields weakening range and we will not manage to generate the same amount of torque with the same parameters so I have to increase that voltage okay and let me okay so i can have v2 like what you can let me call that one v1 so i will have v2 oh, sorry let's call that v1 i will have v2 and that's we have the synchronous speed as like vs1 i will have vs2 so actually you can put you know all those parameters with actual values so of course you can calculate v2 is equal to 60 divided by 50 so this is 1.2 times 230 so let me calculate that one so it is 276 volts actually you can go from actual values but you don't have to do that and we can already use the equation that we have so what we have the torque will be still constant okay i'm applying 3 times 1.2 times v1 square okay which is 276 and our frequency is 1.2 omega s1 so that will be our frequency that is what I would like to show to you R2 prime times S2 so this actually is proportional with the square this is just normal 1 2 so actually I know those relations already so I calculated you know that relation and what you have is you're right that one so 90 so s2 okay calculated it will be 5 over 6 or let me write like that s1 divided 1.2 and that is 
1, 5 over 6 of S1. So S1 will be 0 0.025. Just using that equation, everything is same. You know, the values, I just use the S1 values. So you can, you can draw it from the previous one. But anyway, for the sake of completeness, you can also write 3 times 1.2 times 230 squared divided by 1.2 times of the synchronous speed here, like 5 thirds plus 100 p over 3 times nr2 prime was 0 0.5 times s2. Sorry, this will be s2. S2 will be 0 0.025. Okay. But then uh, you need to be careful about when calculating the actual rotor speed. Okay. You shouldn't do it according to you know 1000 RPM and you shouldn't say, okay, now I am running at 975 RPM because now my synchronous speed has increased. Okay. So NS. In this case, is not 1,000 RPM. It is 1,200 RPM. You can calculate that one. So NR is equal one minus S times S. You can put that value one minus 0 0.025 times 1,200 RPM. So this is equal to 1,070 RPM. Okay. So that is R speed so actually uh, what happened is our machine was generating 9 newton meters at 50 hertz at 970 rpms so it will you just move it to 60 hertz so it will keep accelerating and at the steady state it will still produce 91 newton meters this is not the transient but the steady state condition so in the transit we will solve it in the next section so for 60 hertz so now my speed has increased to 1170 rpm so we just increase it by 200 rpm okay so in the next part uh, we would like to see what happens between these two transient conditions how the machine travels from 970 rpm to 1170 rpm so it's question asked in a graph sketch the top characteristics of the machine and label the operating points with a blah blah and label the other operating as b describe in detail how the machine moves from state a to state b or point b okay so for these points from a to b the question also asks the you know, rotational speed versus time, electromagnetic torque versus time, gross mechanical power versus time. So at first, uh, let's uh, start with part E. Draw coordinate system first. So at first, okay, so we had something like that. Right, so this was the initial like 50 hertz operating point so at first this synchronous speed was 1000 rpm and we were operating at 970 rpm part 970 and this was our point a so initially we were operating here and this is our 91 newton meter so this is torque this is speed cool so then we suddenly we suddenly move from 50 hertz to 60 hertz okay so from 50 hertz to 60 hertz and we were applying a constant v by f operation mode again it's not really critical but if it is you know constant mode 
you will have more or less the same uh, peak torques. So let me use a different color for that. So we will have something like that, right? So this is the 60 hertz characteristic, and that value is 1,200 RPM. Okay, and we were operating here. That is at point B, and that point, that speed is. It is sorry about the bird. It's just lots of noise. Uh, this is. 1,170 1, RPM. Cool. So the question is, okay, this is our initial point. This is our final point. How does it move? Again, your uh, curves doesn't have to be like really, really accurate. But how does it move from point A to point B? So it cannot move you know, instantaneously, you cannot change the speed instantaneously. So what will happen once you change the operating frequency? Now your machine does not have that characteristics on the yellow line, but it has the characteristics on the green line. So if you are at that instant, at that instant that you change the frequency, you are not at that point A, but you are at this point, let's call this point I don't know point X okay so but your torque your crane still requires 91 Newton meters but you are generating as you can see you are generating a larger torque okay so in this region show it here in this region T electrical is larger than T mechanical so therefore J d omega over dt has to be larger than zero, so the crane accelerates. Okay, so it will now move on to I don't know that point, that point, but you still generate more torque, so it will move to that point, it will keep increasing increasing and the speed you know the acceleration will depend on how much extra torque you generate so the derivative of the omega and speed actually is determined by the difference between the electrical torque and the load torque okay but as long as it's in the positive side it will keep accelerating so it will move to point x the speed is 970 rpm so it will keep accelerating until it reaches uh, point B. Okay, so let me write here uh, for the sake of uh, completeness. So when the frequency changes, the speed cannot change instantaneously. But torque characteristics past the video. Okay, so this summarizes you know, what we talk. So from A, you jump to point X, then the acceleration will be uh, quite large at first, and the acceleration will slow down, but the machine will still keep going up until it reaches that point B where the speed is. 1170 rpm so in the next part okay so in the next part uh, the question asks okay it goes from a to point b but how does the rotational speed or how does the torque electromagnetic torque the gross mechanical power changes with time so we will use you know that thing as a reference but let's uh, plot it for the next part of myself let me draw it's okay we have our coordinates so let's call this one an R this is time 
let's call this one electrical torque this is again time and this is the power and this is time okay these are asked by the question so let's say at that point let me put the dash lines as well okay so we have those lines and let's say this is our point a in time and this is our point b so we are starting at that instant previously i was operating at steady state then i just increase the frequency and let's see how it goes so at first again it is not to the scale uh, but just to give you an idea so i was operating here at 970 rpm then in the final moment i will go to one thousand one hundred and seventy rpm so again it will not go linearly from point a to b because t a is minus t l electromagnetic torque is equal to j t omega over dt which you know gives the derivative of that curve and at first you will have a large acceleration a large acceleration means it will go steeper so it will again doesn't have to be like really accurate but it will be more or less like that okay so then after point b you are you have reached the steady state point and you will continue at that 1170 rpm okay so let's have a look at the torque electromagnetic torque at first Initially, it was not zero, it was 91 Newton meter. Okay, so it is here. And I know after point P, it will again stay at 91 Newton meter. So actually, the torque, as you can see, it is here. It makes a jump to whatever value there, and it will come down to 91 Newton meter. So the torque can jump instantly. I don't know the value of that torque we can calculate that one but it will drop to that value so torque can make a jump but speed cannot make a step change okay jump in the uh, in the speed implies the torque will be infinite which is not possible but you can have a jump in the torque cool so then actually power okay and question ask for the gross mechanical power so you know there's no friction so that's the power so you don't have to deal with the electrical parameters at all we know power is equal torque times omega okay so at first i don't know again the actual value but let's say we are applying some power and this was uh let's call this is t1 omega watt so this value is the multiplication of that torque at that speed so it was here and after the steady state it will not be here the torque will be here yes we are still applying the same torque but the speed has increased okay torque is constant speed is changed increase so power it will be higher value I don't know the exact value but i can say it will be t2 times omega 2 i mean t1 is equal t2 but omega 2 is larger than omega 1 actually I, I can calculate the values okay so then at that point the speed has not changed but the torque suddenly changed so i will see a sudden increase in the power that instant i will create some maximum power again i'm not sure if it will just directly decay or make an increase because it depends on those characteristics you know the speed will keep increasing if you happen to come to that point maybe the torque will keep increasing as well 
So that's, you know, not really clear from this data, but I can say it will at least make that kind of graph. Okay, so at that, you will keep giving more power than the initial power. The torque will be same, but the speed has increased, so the power consumption has to increase. Okay. So now, uh, that's the part I like most. So it says, if the crane is lifting a thousand kilogram, one ton of load at constant speed upwards, and the motor is delivering rated power of 16 kilowatts, what is the linear speed of the load in meter per second? Um, you can say, um, should I know the diameter of the drum, gear ratio, because, okay, I can write like power is equal torque times omega, and I know the power, I know uh, the torque, so I can get the speed, but what about the linear speed? Or how can I use the thousand kilo kilograms? So either again, you can say if this is like thousand kilogram, so taking larger. Okay, this is thousand kilogram that is going up and that one is rotating with some torque. So you can say, okay, I can find the radius of that diameter. So I can calculate what is the equivalent of 1000 kilogram to produce 91 Newton meter. Then I can use the same radius to get the linear speed. Yes, that is correct. But that's an easier way. Okay, if power is equal torque times omega, that is the power given by the motor, and that one is used to move that mass upwards. Okay, so I can say that power should be equal to the power dissipated in the linear system. And I can write this like force in newtons times speed. So I know it is thousand kilowatts of power that is the output power is delivering not using not consuming it is giving 16 kilowatts of uh, mechanical power and that one is equal to not thousand okay and it is nine point remember f is equal mg for that one so mass times nine uh, nine 9.81 acceleration or whatever, let's take it 10, okay, times V. So you can get rid of that one and velocity is actually 1.6 meter per second. So it is feasible of a crane. Again, you know, please check your calculations if you find I don't know if, if you forget to use kilograms, whatever, and if you find uh, 1,600 meter per second, that is 5 max, so it is faster than the sound of uh, speed of sound, so probably you made a mistake for that crane, okay? So this is 1.6 meter per second, and you don't have to really calculate the radius of the drum or you know, that kind of things. Okay, thank you.